What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory today. Today I've got nine packs, we're going to get our final Team of the Week upgrade pack in. Um, hopefully we're going to get some UCL stuff today as you're watching this. Um, Champions League is back so I'm hoping for Champions League SBCs and Champions League upgrades. Um, uh, we've got a lot to talk about. There's a lot of gameplay to come. Um, I played out all my games. I actually got through them all. I, you know, this was actually a week where I wanted to finish my games and I was worried that I didn't have enough time. This wasn't one of those weeks where I was like, oh, I'm going to stop here. Oh, I don't want to play my games. I've been playing great FIFA this week. And I was looking back at my past squads and past results. And I tweeted about this. And one thing that I noticed is that since we got Makalele into the team, like the the first five weeks that we played Fuck Champs, we got Elite three twice and Gold three. Sorry, Gold one three times. So we literally went Gold one, Gold one, Elite three, Gold one, Elite three. Since then, we put Makaleli in the team. We've gone twenty five and five, twenty five and five, and this week I ended up twenty four and six. So since he's gone in the team, it has had a massive, massive implication to our squad. I've also been playing uh, Alonso. At left mid, he's been going into centre mid, which has freed up De Bruyne to be able to play it back up at Cam again. I tried Heung-Min Son at Cam, didn't really like him. Tried Martial at Cam, didn't really like him. Paulinho was okay, not amazing. Mkhitaryan was okay, not amazing. De Bruyne is just the best Cam I've used in the game so far this year. So that is why we did that. And since I've been using Lala and Mbappe, my God, they are fantastic. But before we get into the gameplay for today, guys... I've got some packs saved up, some pretty dead packs, um, like a silver players pack. I use my fuck swap players. I'm not doing the final two fuck swap players. I could have got a rare mega pack for it uh, if I would have done one of the last two, but I don't want to play fuck rivals. You know, I'm not going to conform. Can I send them up? No, they're, they're untradeable. I'm not going to conform to what EA, like EA are putting in weekly objectives, really extensive fuck rivals uh, specifications, and they're doing this. Because they know, as well as I know, as well as you know, that for specifically people that don't mind rank 3 rewards, and then even more so for people like me that are in Division 2, uh, I don't need to play games, right? I just don't need to play games. In fact, look how close I am to rank 2. It's already like Monday night. There's two days left, and I'm 3,400 points clear. Last week, it got to 13,230. I might need to play two games on Wednesday night to make sure that I hit the threshold, but I'm not going to go my and get myself up to rank two or rank one when they refuse to um acknowledge the fact or well they have acknowledged it to a degree but they refuse to change the reward structure and fix uh how backwards it is so with that in mind i'm gonna refuse to do weekly objectives that aren't really super necessary to me um but we've got some packs i've done three of the flash no two of the flash sbcs i forgot i was not even around for the first Flash SBC, which was a prime gold players pack. So gutted to miss out on that one. We got a, a rare mix players pack. We got three League One packs, uh, premium gold packs, and one Team of the Week player. I've got these because I just, I, I don't want to waste too many resources on, you know, the, these packs. But on the off chance that we hit a Neymar, you know, if our luck's in, it's in. If we hit a Neymar, an inform Mbappe, then happy days. Um, and if we don't, I haven't, like, overburdened myself with the amount of resources wasted so I'll be quite happy with that and uh, I generally speaking have not a lot in my club in fact tomorrow's episode is going to be like a, a club tour looking at what we've got what we've sold how much of everything is left um oh is that no it's a little bit too thin for for boards so yeah tomorrow will be a nice little club tour for you guys and today of course is these packs including my final team of the week upgrade pack and then great news again, I did finish 24 and 6 this week, so we, we didn't quite get uh, Elite 2 for the third week running. But I'm still, I'm happy to be getting a 24, 25 uh, mark every week. Um, and then with that in mind, it will now be about rebuilding and, uh, you know, restructuring, getting ready for Futmus, which will be in about two weeks, probably around the eighth, uh, wait, um, it will be... Probably around the 7th of December, Futmus will, will most likely start. So very happy with that. Now, 75 to 80 rate player. We could get an inform in this. I've seen them show up before. Come on, be good to us. No, we, we'll, take, uh, we'll take the highest rated. We'll take Mauro, Mario Rui. 
um, and we'll send all of that stuff into the club and get rid of that. So that was my untradeable French League packs. As I said, I just built them a little bit. We then got uh, two rare election player packs, one rare mixed player pack. Now, obviously, the mixed player pack contains bronzes, silvers, and golds, but we could still get good stuff out of this. Come on, at least give me some boards. Is that... No, it's not thick enough for boards. That's too bad. It's going to be Vasquez. Nothing too amazing. Uh, the team of the week pack that I've got is untradeable. If I do hit which I probably will know in my luck. If I do hit a duplicate untradeable, um, I will rebuild another one, a trade, a tradable team of the week pack. So maybe we've got one more to go. We've got two rare election player packs, six gold, six rares. Sorry, six gold, six silver, 12 rares. That's a board. That's thick enough for a board. That's nice. Come on, be something good. German, good start. Center back, Zule. That's very nice. He's actually worth... I'll, I'll hold on to him for the time being, just in case we do need to build um, a team of the week SBC. But uh, 84 rated, he's nice. That's a nice like, little 6K in there. Uh, what have we got from these guys? Is Oliveira there worth anything? No. Uh, Saudi England 2 could be worth a little something? No. And then Vargas could be worth something? No, not my day. And then we also get Bender in the pack as well. And then last but not least, we get ourselves another rare Electron Players pack. What is in this one, EA? No boards again. My, my, my pack luck just hasn't been what it was. And do you know what? That is absolutely okay. You know, we can't have all the luck all the time. We're going to grind hard. We're going to work hard. What we've got to do now is, is forget about pack luck now. The, the primary goal is making sure that we have coins. And as you can see in the top left, we're nearly at 900,000 coins. And you will see tomorrow during the squad, uh, the club tour, you will see a little bit deeper as to how close we are to like almost 2 million coins actually. But here we go, guys. Team of the week player. Can we get a walkout? No, we can't. Now, is it going to be an untradeable duplicate? Because um, if it is, then it is, isn't it? It's Yedvaj. Oh, oh no, actually, I, I don't think he's... I think that's a tradable duplicate. It is a tradable duplicate. So that is the final Team of the Week pack for me, guys. I'm not wasting any more resources on that. I will waste resources on the UCL upgrade packs should they come. But this is going to be the end of the live part for now. Let's get into some gameplay. All right, guys, as we go into the gameplay, um, all of these games were played on stream, which is interesting. Um, you know, obviously, as a streamer, I'm not a streamer. I'm a YouTuber predominantly. Wouldn't mind moving into streaming generally uh, in the near future. But when you're streaming, you kind of get sniped a little bit more. And I'm not saying stream snipes this or stream snipes that, right? But when I play games off stream... I've, I've come up against icon teams and such very rarely. When I play games on stream, I seem to come up against them a little bit more. Um, and in fact, this week, you know, I, I said to you guys a little bit earlier on, I finished 24 and 6 this week. You guys, if you follow me on social media, you'll know that. It's the worst finish I've had for three weeks. But I'm generally delighted with my overall level of play over the last three weeks. You know, getting 25 and 2, 5 two weeks in a row and getting 24 and 6 this week is great but this week although I got my worst finish in three weeks I am playing out of my skin this week however I played this week uh, a guy called I Charlie twice in the space of three games I matched him when he was 15 and 1 and I beat him 4 nil. and then I matched him a few games later again and he beat me 4-2 I think so like that was a, a, an elite standard player that I matched twice whereas normally I wouldn't even match an elite standard player at that stage in the game at all I matched against uh Shadow who went 29 and 1 this week I don't know if he got top 100 with his 29 and 1 or not but he went 29 and 1 and his one was a DC and he beat me 3-1 with his full icon team I matched against a Portuguese pro that I beat and against another uh I think like a Belarusian pro or something like that that I beat um, and then I matched against another two players that finish like Elite 2, Elite 1 that tweeted me after the games with their records. And then I matched a guy again that was 15 and 2 and I beat him. And so although I got only 24 wins this week, I've played the like in terms of the quality of opponent, I've played the best level of opponents I've played since FIFA 19 started. So I'm I'm delighted. I'm genuine. I'm genuinely came out of this weekend league just so happy Especially due to the fact that I had 20 games left to play on Sunday and I played 13, yeah, th 13, 17, 17, 13 or so of them on stream, live on stream, um, all in one sitting as well, no break. So I was, uh, I was pretty, uh, pr pretty, pretty delighted 
with that. But anyway, into some comments, guys. First one's from Zach Green, and Zach says, Hennep, love the videos. Just wanted to hear your opinion on ridiculous prices of baby icons. Baby Layman used to be worth 260k before the Prime Icon SBC set came out, and now he is 700k. This is the same for the majority of the baby icons, and I feel like a large majority of the baby icons aren't worth 700k. My opinion, I think EA should do something, baby icon SBC tradable, in order to reduce the price of the baby icons so that people can start to use them again. What do you think? Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we talked about this in yesterday's video. Um, so, I don't know. But yeah, I, I, think, I think a baby icon SBC is absolutely imperative. Alternatively, if they release an icon SBC set that doesn't require an icon that will also have the same effect and it will crash the icon market because right now people are just holding there's basically there's not enough supply and there's a lot of demand if they release an icon sbc set where there's no demand needed the supply eventually will outweigh the demand for actually using the icons and they will like come down in price again so i think um i think yeah one of two things need to happen Number one, they need to release an Icon SBC set that doesn't require an Icon. Or number two, they need to release a baby Icon SBC indeed. Nathan Jasper says, just a suggestion there. Why don't you make a formation just for kickoff goals? Maybe drop back at five at the back, plenty in midfield. Just use it for when you score for like just five minutes. It's, yeah, possibly, yeah. I mean, I don't concede a, an insane number of kickoff goals, generally speaking. Um... The, the problem with even having a different formation is is the formation isn't the reason why people can see kickoff goals. It's, it's the way the players interact when the game's not in fluid motion. When the game's in fluid motion, the AI manipulates itself and maneuvers over the field in, in a fluid motion. When you kick off, you're essentially... What happens is, is the attackers push up and the midfielders push up because they need to get into their inflow formation, right? Or their inflow positions or whatever. What happens is, is when the, the, they start shifting up and the, uh, the, the now attacking team starts pressing in, you've essentially got a, a situation where every kickoff is, is a counter-attack. And so if they make the right pass here or there, they're going to score the goal or get a great opportunity to score a goal. And having five defenders and lots of midfielders isn't going to change the way that the AI interacts. So... I, I think it's it's less so of a prob situation of me changing formations and stuff, and more a, a situation of just trying to understand the patterns and, and get that tackle in beforehand, you know? Um, however, I will say this. Something that's really interesting that I was noticed on stream when I was streaming last night, something that was really interesting to me is that since I've got rid of David Trezeguet, I have scored considerably less corners. I, I didn't really fathom just how many corners he scored for me. And although... Uh, Aubameyang is nice and tall. I don't know if he has the power header trait. Uh, what did Trezeguet have the power header trait? Is that why he scored so many corners for me? Trezor, David Trezeguet Prime that we packed, of course. So his trait, yeah. So he has target forward and power header. Whereas Aubameyang, I don't think because oh, Aubameyang is the player for me who stands at that near post, uh, and Aubameyang has. Yeah, he doesn't have power header nor um, target forward. And so because of that, I score way less corners. And it it has had a little influence from time to time. Like I used to score, I'd say like one, maybe, maybe two corner goals every three games. And now I probably score one every 10. Um, so that lack of extra goals is, is costing me in some games. You know, corners that are used and utilized as a good uh, offensive piece. And I, I need either a new corner routine or I need to get somebody in my team that has the power header trait. What was really interesting is, is I, in the, my very final game of the weekend league this weekend, I put Guilavogui in centre back. I got Ramos sent, uh, I got Varane sent off uh, for what I thought was a good tackle in game 29. Um, so he missed game 30. So I put Guilavogui and I put Fardman in, and uh, Guilavogui actually scored from a corner. Now, of course, he's six foot two, but then again, so is. Uh, or Bamiang, uh, Guilavogui had an anchor chem style, so he has 99 heading and 89 jumping at six foot two. Whereas for me, uh, Obamayang has, Obam uh, Yang, he has for me on him the sniper chem style, which means he has 83 heading and 82 jumping, and he's the guy that stands at my near post. I don't want him to stand at my near post. I want anybody else pretty much to stand there but i actually don't have like I, what did trez have for jumping and, and heading um trezeguet had 
92 heading only 77 jumping but because he has the power header and target forward trait he just he just did better he just did better so i think i need to figure out a way to get somebody into my squad that's going to win me headers from corners and, and get me goals because that is costing me goals and it's costing me games joseph reed says you can tell where people are aiming when taking a penalty as the player's head moves left or right depending on the direction they're aiming makes pen shootouts way easier you are right and this is, there's, there's been a tell in the game for the last, like, four years. Sometimes it's how far away from the ball their foot place is. Like, I think it was FIFA 17. If their standing foot was, like, a very far away from the ball, it was going to the opposite direction of what the strong foot. So if it was a right footer taking it and their foot was way out on the left, it's because they were bending it in. If they were a left footer and it was way out on the right, it was going to the right post. Um, and if it was, if the standing foot was close to the ball, it was going to the same direction as what foot they were taking. So if they were right-footed and they, the standing foot gets placed right next to the ball, they would dive. They were shooting to the right, right. And so all you had to do back then was just basically watch the standing foot and react quick enough. Oh, it's far away. Let me dive left. Oh, it's close. Let me dive right. Like that's all you had to do. Um, this year and last year, you can tell with the head movement. Now a lot of people, especially at the level of FIFA that I play, a lot of people know that. And so a lot of people bait it. Sometimes they'll look left on purpose and then go right. Sometimes they'll look left and go down the middle. And then when you're trying to save penalties, um, you, you kind of view, like if somebody actually looked left, I would probably dive right um, because I'd be like, oh, this guy knows, I'm, you know, he's baiting me. Um, but uh, me saving penalties isn't actually a big, big issue. I just miss a lot of penalties. And, and I don't even necessarily mean I have penalty saved. I miss a lot of penalties, whether it's off the post or, or wide. I just miss a whole bunch, man. And it's very frustrating. I, def I, I need to work on that. I need to go one day, go into a penalty shootout and uh, just practice, practice, practice to get better with those because uh, it's pretty bad of me to be missing them at this stage. Again, this weekend, I lost a penalty shootout. Last weekend, I lost two penalty shootouts. Two or mm, three or four weekend leagues ago, I lost three penalty shootouts. Like, I shouldn't be losing them. I should be winning them. Or at least I should win more than I lose, that's for sure. Dara says, hey, Nep, loving the road to glory. Just wondered if you think it would be worthwhile starting a new account or run a second one with a new challenge. With somebody who has already over 500 games played, feel the game is starting to become a bit repetitive. Now, what are your thoughts? In terms of starting a new road to glory, I think we, we covered that yesterday. I'm not going to be starting a new one. Uh, I'm quite happy with this road to glory. I'm happy to grind more. As I said, even if that means people don't show up to the videos until there's something big happening or anything like that, I'm chill with that. Even if, you know, if we go down to 50, 60,000 core viewers that are just here every day, no matter what, you guys are the best, you're the beasts, and I'll make the content for you, no problem. In terms of having played 500 games and feel the game is starting to become a bit repetitive, what's funny is I'm, I feel like there's still so much to learn. I'm enjoying playing the game. I'm enjoying learning. I'm enjoying figuring out the right patterns, the right maneuvers, the right movements, both offensively and defensively. We talked about this in a video previously. This is like, for me, FIFA is like a game of chess. And what it comes down to ultimately, and I got this a lot from watching other people, whether it's Nick Castro, AA, when he streams games on draft or whatever, is uh, what I take from people is when I, when I watch someone, I don't just watch them to watch them. I watch them and I sit there and I think, what would I have done here? What did you do here? What is my general outcome from this scenario? And what was your outcome from this scenario? And what that does is it just helps me improve my decision making. And, uh, you know, like I think for you guys as well, if you're struggling, decision making is paramount in FIFA. When you get down the wing, it, basically what, what's going to happen is your opponent is going to make a decision and you're going to make a decision. And if you make a better decision than him, you are going to come out on top. And there are certain things that happen a lot that are very effective, very efficient, that you can utilize over and over again because reactions and decision-making come into play a little bit. But let's say you continually go down the right-hand side and you continue to cross it in. That's a bad decision. You don't score many goals from that. Sometimes you're going to score goals from crosses, sometimes not. Have, having a lot of options, this, this is where the whole being good at FIFA thing comes into play. Having a lot of options is and having a lot of opportunity to make different decisions and then making the right decision makes great FIFA players. FIFA is, in terms of a competitive game, FIFA is the least uh, impressive game when it comes to reactions and um, like, like, 
oh man, like just smarts within play. Like with, with League of Legends, reacting quickly to certain situations and scenarios is important as hell. Like even a split second could be the difference between you getting caught by, you know, a stun or a hook or, uh, you know, something. In FIFA, it's about interpretate, interpreting and understanding patterns of play. So when you get into a certain scenario and you kind of, you understand the pattern of play a lot, making sure that that pattern of play works for you again is going to be important. And then when you're defending, spotting the pattern that your opponent is trying to initiate and stopping that from happening is important. So for example, when somebody gets a free kick on the edge of the box, more often than not, one of two things will happen. Number one, they'll lay it off and have a shot straight away. Or number two, they'll make their two players run and they'll pass it down the channel and either cut it across or score a goal. And so this, again, comes down to decision-making. And in this instance, sometimes it's about luck rather than like eff efficient decision-making. But you have to decide, is this guy going to lay it off? If he is, I want to break one man away from the wall and stand there to press him as soon as he lays it off so he can't get a free shot away? Or is he going to run his men off the wall and play it down the line? In which case, I need to break a man off the wall and go and cover that space so that I can tackle the ball. And then it's of your opponent to make the decision as to which version he uses, which one works best for him. And, and like FIFA is more about a game of chess. It's more about a game of understanding and interpretation and, and planning and, and understanding patterns than it is just being very, very quick reactions because quick reactions aren't really going to save you all that much. La Flame says, is passing affected by weak foot like shooting? Great vids, by the way. Yes. So passing and shooting are both imp impacted by weak foot. From what I understand, and I, I had read this back in FIFA 12 or FIFA 13 from some one of the official EA guys on the official EA forums. I can't find this literature anywhere anymore but each star weak foot represents 20% of the player's stats. And so if you have a guy with four star weak foot and 99 shooting, when he shoots on his weak foot, it is equivalent to having 80 shooting uh, and the same with passing. However, with five star weak foot players, even though they get maximum stats on both feet, for some reason in FIFA, because they still have a strong foot, EA still sometimes favors their strong foot for things that shouldn't do. So, so many times I get in a position with De Bruyne where I'm running from six o'clock to 12 o'clock for a left foot finesse shot to the far corner. Now we all know De Bruyne has a five star weak foot and therefore it should be as equally good as his strong foot. The problem is, is that what EA will sometimes do is they will cause De Bruyne to try and hit that with the outside of the boot with his right foot because that's his predominant foot. So it doesn't make any difference on stats, but it sometimes will make a difference on what foot they use. Ryan Sefrovic says Pogba or Mbappe? Mbappe. For me, my team, my next upgrades have got to be, like I'm using Marcus Alonso at left mid. He's going into center mid. De Bruyne is going back up at Cam. My two center mids are Alonso and Pogba. They are the weakest spots in my team right now. I really, really, really need to get better midfielders, center midfielders, um, in my team because I feel like if I had two better centre midfielders I would edge another one or two games per week and maybe I'd get up to the 25-26 mark instead of the 24-25 mark and that would be a little bit better for me but anyway guys we hit gold one in today's episode I've still got six games left I have the opportunity to get 26 and uh, for this weekend league of course you guys know I finished 24 and 6 I lost two of my last six games um, fairly so as well. One of the games I, I got outplayed in the first half and outplayed my opponent in the second half after I figured out his play style, but I just didn't have enough time to come back. And in one of the games, I came up against Shadow, who is a pro player with an icon squad, and he beat me 3-1, and, you know, that's fair's fair. Um, but I'm delighted to have been 20-6. and six. We're going to get the rest of the games in, in tomorrow's episode. Tomorrow, we're also going to do a little bit of a club tour and a few more of the... Um, flash SBCs. I'm going to complete all the flash SBCs that I think are good value for money and stack the packs up and just open the packs all at once. But this, guys, for today is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.